Uh, we live with it. So, Bitcoin, man. Where is Bitcoin going next? Where Bitcoin has two possible potential scenarios right now that I'm seeing. Okay. And, um, you know, I am feeling pretty good still about this being the bottom. I think this last push down. Mm -hmm. This move right here that liquidated these lows. I still think there is a good uh, chance that this could be the bottom oh, and wow. we are just seeing a retracement. You know, the one thing I didn't like was we didn't see a clean close above this mm -hmm. on, uh, you know, higher time frames like four hour or above. If we pull up the 12 hour, uh, we kind of just wicked it. So it looked like we just grabbed some um, internal liquidity. And then uh, now we're kind of seeing lower movement down. Back to the downside. Uh, this was a daily candle, I believe. A daily order block. I had marked out right there too. So mm -hmm. now we did come into it and and just trade above it and just kind of stab all that liquidity and, and this imbalance. Yeah. So I, I am curious to see right now um how we respond from basically this this daily candle and uh, really just these these discounted prices that we're seeing right now from just this this uh new dealing range that we got dealt right now. So if we pull up a fib, you know, I think I don't know if we'll come all the way down to here, mm -hmm. but I think we we can come to like around 60k, come back into like the monthly open, which was that this candle. So mm -hmm. I do want to see how how we react. If we can see some more stabilization within this imbalance and um and then just this kind of breaker block right here and daily candle and the monthly open. So if we can see more accumulation form right there, then I'll feel a lot better. And then seeing a good close above 65 again, again I think uh, would make me feel a lot more confident about this. But if the, if we do see this as the low and then we kind of see another, a lower high get put in right here, I think we can see uh, the beginning of a next leg up, you know, another move, you know, all the way back to, to all time highs and then, you know, maybe make the next extension higher. Mm. Uh, but if this area does fail, you know, I am just looking for 50K again, around 50K for a possible bottom right here. But uh, yeah, it's kind of my thought process right now. Um, I just, I I don't know. I think with, you know, the Chinese, the Hong Kong ETFs being approved, usually the that doesn't kind of go into effect until like, like two or three weeks after. Yeah. It's already been like, I think a couple of weeks. So we'll see... Uh, you know, if we kind of see a similar run to how we saw ETFs, um, Bitcoin ETFs earlier this year, was we saw a nice pullback. We kind of saw that happen after the Hong Kong ETF got approved. So maybe this is the bottom and, and we're kind of just like re-stabilizing right here in this area. This kind of like liquidity that got ran through and kind of coming back to that area that all the liquidity that got ran through. And um, let's see if we kind of hold this, man. If we don't hold it, then I think 50K... Uh, is probably the next move down. Okay. Okay. I am curious to see more of the downside, and I'll pull up my chart a little later. Um, Just because, bro, like you said, with Hong Kong ETFs, they were approved already, and I'm pretty sure they're already into effect, right? So now we got to wait for that, that generated liquidity, right, to accumulate before maybe the next leg up. But on top of that, I'll never forget, I was listening to a podcast not too long ago, and they were talking about how statistically... Bitcoin will move its next leg up three to six months after happening, you know? So happening mm -hmm. was literally last month. So like, and with the summer looming, I don't know. I think it's going to be like a, like a, a consolidating sideways kind of summer for crypto. Just to like really shake the, the people out who thought there was going to be an easy bull run, you know? Like we need the liquidity at 50 just so I could buy more down there. Bitcoin chilling until the breakout, but we welcome the Bitcoin discounts. No facts. Shit, 50? That sounds pretty hot. Something else we can check out as well. BTC dominance right now. Mm. So honestly, dude, like, I wouldn't be mad if Bitcoin just chills mm -hmm. and consolidates and then all coins gain more strength because mm -hmm. this looks like we, we're kind of destroying right now. Mm -hmm. this could kind of be that Utah um, that just swept liquidity 
and then if we can see this thing drop lower and, and see this thing just melt and all coins gain a lot more strength, mm -hmm. then like I would I would be happy with that. You know, I want to see all coins rip again. Yeah. Um, so maybe we see that, maybe just we do see uh Bitcoin consolidate and move sideways, and we see some altcoins start to rip, mm -hmm. see meme coins start to go crazy again, and um, you know, have our watch our bags pump. Uh, another thing we could look at is the uh total alt market caps. Mm. The total one, I believe this is total two. So this is the uh, without Bitcoin. So this is still looking really good. I mean, it's just, we're just kind of creating a healthy retracement right now. Mm -hmm. Same thing with total uh which one is this total one, I believe, excluding Bitcoin and ETH. So it just makes sense, you know, like to yeah. see a nice cool off after some just crazy bullish movements the last uh couple months that we saw so like you know it's all right like i don't this is normal this is healthy i don't think this is like the end of the bull run type thing so like mm. you know if anything it's kind of looking good for all it's just they're like starting to gear up for like another move higher and looking at some charts um they're looking kind of they're just looking more bullish now like they look like they kind of created their bottoms and uh maybe they'll do another move higher Oh, so, I'm liking where Solana... Actually, I had an area marked out. Kind of where Solana is looking like it's sitting at. I'm curious. I like this daily candle right here. It's pretty yeah, nice. a little low. For Solana right for... Accumulate couple, like some more souls. No I'm out of Solana. I, I sold mine. No! What a, what a paper hand ass nigga. That's crazy. Eight, I mean, I bought an 8, sold at 180. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. And uh, I just took my, my gains, bro. Um... Mm -hmm. Cause like I, I see I don't really see Solana making me the returns I want to see so I was like I, I'm gonna ape into some some lower cap stuff and some meme coins mm -hmm. and just kind of risk it for the biscuit type thing. There you um, go. Yeah, it's kind of that was a play. Remember, Juke, oh. Juke's looking kind of solid too. Like same little daily candle that ran liquidity right there. Mm -hmm. Um, I am still like, you know, if we do hit 50k on Bitcoin, then I I think we could come back down. That's, you know, all coins can do give us the discounts of a lifetime again. Um, and then meme coins are like Pepe. This is why I'm like, yo, this is looking fucking bullish, bro. Because bullish is Pepe up. has been just pumping higher and higher, making it higher highs. And then uh, we do have this daily candle as well. That's kind of interesting that we could probably see Pepe come back into and mitigate. Same with, uh, I think, with. Oh, whip is like in there. Oh. Bonk. Bonk. You know, we, I think we could maybe come back into some balance one more time and then go higher. Mm. But it is just kind of like chilling above this, this like key level right here that just ran liquidity and then creating all this liquidity right here. So that buy side, yeah. Bonk has been pretty solid. Um, Dude, probably is just lit because it's so pumpy. Like it just freaking pumps hard. And uh I think with the base narrative still being strong, I think base is gonna be um massive. So um, you know, it's still fairly new. So uh, you know, I'm, you guys already know the vibes. Aerodrome, I think is gonna be really good vibes right now as well. Um, this has like so much upside potential, I think. This can definitely go to like five dollars. But this is like the uh, the decks of base. So like the Uniswap, the uh, like the Jupiter basically mm. but for base chain. So uh, I think this can do really, really well. And uh, buying, getting it at these prices right now is, is steel, bro. I don't think we'll ever see these prices again, honestly. <laughs> but, and then the last one, uh, AI render. Render is looking really good too. Uh, render is kind of like the leading token for AI. So like, to me, this is just looking really nice. Maybe we see something like that, but right back into inbounds. But yeah, man. As far as crypto goes, that's that's kind of all I got. What are you thinking right now, bro? Like, what are you your thoughts now, on? The, I mean, the honestly, market? right now it's a really dope time to just keep loading up on some cryptos. And now I'm not going to hold you. The narrative for me has changed from in terms of like the beginning of this bull run to now, you know, now kind of being in the midst of it, 
you know, having some highs and lows, having like, you know, the, the excitement cool down and now we get to see the dust settle, you know? So really when it comes to Bitcoin, yeah, I think we're going to move sideways. So of course the other coins will move sideways as well for the rest of the summer. But this next leg up will cause everything else to rise too, right? So mm-hmm. now comes the game of, well, are you going to allocate all your money to just Bitcoin? Are you going to allocate your money to, you know, level one, level two tokens, only only meme coins if you want a higher R&R return, right? It's, it's really giving me time now to kind of figure out my next step in the crypto, um, in this bull market cycle, feel me? So actually, yeah. you know, I'm kind of happy with it. You know, I'm definitely enjoying... Um, the breather because I felt like low key when Bitcoin was just pumping from twenty to literally sixty. I was like, oh shit, let me buy this and let me buy this. And granted, they all went up, but I never forget when even you told me in the beginning of this bull run, like you don't need every coin. You just need like a solid three, you know, a solid like very few. Be happy with those returns. Like have a plan ahead of time and just let it play out. You know, just buy an extra coin every now and then. Not not every fucking week. Like I would. Hundred percent, bro. I don't, I don't think like spreading yourself thin is going to do you give you those, you know, life changing gains that you want to see. I think um, narrowing it down, refining your, your tokens and just doing a handful and going, you know, stronger and then heavier on those, ba- those bags is where you, you'll see like those profits that you're happy with, you know, No because that's the thing. A lot of people like I want to have exposure to everything. And it's like, dude, just. Just get you, you know, an AI or two, you know, a couple of bags in AI, mm-hmm. uh, exposure in um, Solana network, exposure uh, in base network, some and then some meme, bro, and that's it. Like that's your like handful right there. I can't believe uh, it's in Solana. But I just say, yeah, dude. Like if you want to make damage, go heavier on on less. Less is always more. Yeah. Uh, that's why I, that's why I did what I did because I'm like, I'm a little, I was a little too spread out. Mm. So I was like, all right, let me take profits on a couple bags yeah. that they will probably continue to do good, but like they're not gonna give me the ROIs that I want. And like right now, I'm I'm just in crypto for the risk it to make the biscuit type of plays. Fuck yeah, baby, we got uh, a Lambo tomorrow, my nigga. Yeah. Right. And following, you know, we got the right narratives. Like we know exactly like where the money's going, attention's going, and uh attention is you know the oil of our generation, you know. So wherever attention flows, that's where money and energy is gonna go. And um, and I think we you know we're hitting it on the head. It's just kind of letting time do its thing and let time catch up. Mm-hmm. And then uh, so that's good. Like I don't really care about you know how my bags are looking right now. You know, they're fluctuating yeah. all the time. Uh, you know, seeing them really high and then seeing them like split. And um. I just know, like, long-term, dude, like, we still got another year, like, maybe a year and a half of, of, of this bull run. Yep. I think with elections coming, uh, you know, post-having effect, we will see, um, you know, some mania happen again. <laughs> so, I, I think I'm just, like, I'm just waiting, bro, like, at this point, like, I'm just chilling, like, I know that uh, market's gonna market, <laughs> you know, market's gonna do its thing. Sure. And, um, I think once, like, elections come around and Trump gets... Because Trump has actually been talking about crypto too recently. Oh, has he? What's he been yeah. saying? I'm curious. I know. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Pause. Like, oh, I saw a bro. head article today. He was talking sh- like he was like, "Um, that dumbass Joe Biden don't even know uh, anything about crypto." Yeah. There's the headline. <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, Taking he shots. Some crazy stuff. I mean, he has NFTs, bro. Like his NFTs are like on Polygon Network. No like, way. Trump has NFTs. Um, yeah. Yeah, like the most volume, and I think like the highest value. Yeah, what's the what's the use case? Like dinner with Trump, fucking um, I don't know, like shit like that. Golfing with him. Yeah, or something like that. Something no like that. No way. Yes, yeah, shit like that. That's you know, remember you remember Vivi? You guys, did you guys ever? Yeah. Do yeah, 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 I remember that shit. Like those, you were on doing the drops. Yeah, um, it's fucking on. Dude, I ran those up, but Vivi actually only is uh just partnered up with Base. So now they're on base. Yeah. No fucking way. Yeah. And if wow. you're kind of dead though, but I think, I think because of the, the brands that they have collaborations with and they're more just collectibles, mm. they, they could probably like, you know, maybe make a comeback. Yeah. But NFTs in general are just kind of like dead right now. Cause like, I know well, people are generally still collecting gems and like going to get crazy. Really? Are they still doing drops? Yeah. They're still doing drops. 
I don't know. I, I had someone hit me up. Like, not, right now. Bro, I literally, which one call it? Not too long ago, I had someone hit me up like, yo, make sure you, you have your VV wallet set and your, your alarm for 10. And I was just like, bro, I'm okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll happily just miss this one. Yeah, I had Omi as well, like the crypto uh, four years ago. Last oh. cycle, I had some Omi. Okay, it's well, probably my bit market somewhere, but Omi, my homie. God. Yeah, I remember, I remember Omi was a player. Yeah, bro, but I mean, yeah, we can uh look over some indices now. Okay. As well, I know we're going higher, but here's the motherfucking issue, Kev. The issue isn't the bias. The issue is where to execute. Cause like I could I could sit and draw it on. I'm a patient Baby man, open. but my my margin level don't let me sit and draw it on that long. So like just just execute at the daily open, bro, and then <laughs> like the bottom of the day, bro. Oh right, motherfucker said the power of three. Gotcha. But that's the thing is like you don't always gotta wait for like the highest time frame mm-hmm. on indices, mm-hmm. especially because if we're if you're trading on futures you don't have we're not even swinging them so it doesn't even matter yeah about that it's just kind of like playing the daily bias daily narrative mm-hmm. and then um if you can catch the daily like the new york open move then um that can just catapult your trade for the day and then even there's one thing i noticed too is like bro sometimes if you just catch the new york open move uh-huh. and then you just hit like your your rr on that trade like right away mm-hmm. Like the first within the first like thirty minutes, you can literally be done for the rest of the day. You don't yeah. gotta hold through the choppiness again. Like yeah. that's usually what happens. And now um, I've noticed personally that it kind of like if I'm on the charts during that time and I'm still holding a trade, it just kind of like fucks with me a little bit because now I'm like ah like is it gonna come back? And then the retracing comes near my entry, and then I'm like tweaking. Yeah. And then um, you know, so I just realized that like if I am gonna hold, just kind of like like minimize the risk go or move to break even and just like look stop looking at the charts because <laughs> yeah. i would like start doing some dumb stuff no, you know like over over yeah over managing let's go to the gym bro and yeah. let the trade pan out and if it keeps going in your direction cool but i've just been like trying to get in the habit of just being out of the market like um if i hit my my rr like right away like that uh, from new york open but if i miss the new york open trade then then I'll have to be a little more patient. Because mm-hmm. that's the thing was like, with futures, you only have until like 4 p.m. almost, like yes. to get your trade. And then I realized, um, I'm like, shit, like if I don't get my move, my trade right away in New York open, then I'm kind of like antsy, bro. I'm like, I gotta get in this market yeah. <laughs> before. And I'm running out of time. Oh. And then I kind of, I was like, you know, not take A plus quality of setups. Mm. But that was one of my biggest things I realized uh, recently. Even though I, I was trading like fairly well, um, but I just realized um, with like live accounts, it's just different, bro. Like, you gotta really have a, a withdrawal plan and and like almost like an exit strategy too, because like oh. you start now, you start, you start being really fixated on the dollar amounts. I feel like how much I'm making. Yeah. You know. Now, granted, it is the whole point of trading to make money, but at the same right. time. The bigger point, and I was actually talking to my roommate about this the other day, the whole point of all this isn't to get funded. It's really not. The whole point of all this is to be a CPT, a consistently profitable trader. Right now, granted, prop firms are a great terms of are a great tool in terms of leverage, because like I pay five hundred dollars and I now have a hundred K account. So, but really like 10K leverage, fire, great R&R investment, right? But the thing is, you know, we get so rushed into, okay, well, let me just go ahead and like you said, be antsy, look for these trades rather than fine tuning the trading plan so that it doesn't matter if you trade Forex, futures, stocks, et cetera, right? You can take advantage of what the, when the market presents you your opportunity, you know, not just a opportunity. Cause like, that's the hardest thing, not just having a trading plan, but then taking or executing a trade that's close to your trading plan, but not isn't really, you know, and it's hard because, you know, I'll still do it Monday, literally this week, Monday. Yeah, I literally took a trade that was not aligned with my trading plan, but the bias looked good, you know, and like, hey, I can fucking swing this until next year and it's going to look really pretty on Instagram, <laughs> you know, but nah, bro, it really boils down to, to that knowing 
your trading plan and really just being patient enough or knowing yourself too. Cause like, even you say like, you know, if you're in it too long, you start getting antsy, start mismanaging it, you know, X, Y, Z. And so like, you know, you really got to be self aware. I was talking about self aware. It was just, a, today was ugly. I did, I, did, I took a trade, but like I closed that yeah. market even. The only trade I took today was uh, at open. I played off of all this right here. I was just like on the one minute. I don't think we got time on his hands. I think uh, Kevin as well, bro. He sniped that. Yeah. I, oh, I, yeah. I he dropped it But yeah, I, I basically just played off of this this FU candle. Mm -hmm. uh, I just seen that we were just like order flow was starting to make, become bullish. And then we just had imbalance. You know, we had melted basically out of London. So I thought in New York we could see a pullback if, and then maybe see uh just another leg up again. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, you know, it looked like distro. And, you know, maybe even continue selling off, you know, um, as well. See, but, but that's the thing. If we distro, there's no clear, like, target of where to run to, you know? Yeah. Cause maybe just... that, that low yeah. or it's in balance to target, like, internal liquidity. Mm -hmm. but yeah i just seen that like we had had a sell-off and i was like ah, i don't really want to sell like this low you know like it looks like we're just doing lower time frame accumulation and then you know that hit so i was like all right cool hey. so we had a uh, pretty pretty solid trade on that um you know i, I was the, i did want to see it just keep going up so yeah. when it did come back it uh took me out in profit so hey. i was just like trading my stop loss so i it is what it is but mm -hmm. you know nonetheless pretty pretty solid trade um but from here i think we will maybe sell off again during london yeah. so like just how you seen that asian highs get manipulated and ran through if we see some sort of like bearish order flow like we saw here how like you know, we've seen whatever in the 15 minute, 15 minute OB. You know, then we saw a reaction from there. And then we see this 15 minute right there get respected as well. So if we see some sort of like similar pr price action like this, we're just seeing some uh, distribution like that out of London. If you guys stay up for London, then uh, maybe see this thing dawn. This was around like five, six in the morning, Sheesh. central time. I don't know if you guys are up during that time. I, I'm not up. So mm -hmm. like, but if I had seen this, I probably would have took these shorts. It just looked clean. You know, we have a lot of liquidity to target, downside target, balance. So kind of same thing here. You know, we're building this, this sell side liquidity, Asian lows and sell side liquidity right here. So if we see something like that, I just don't know. Um. Yeah, maybe it's something like that happen. I mean, I think we could run a little lower for London, but then use here. I'm gonna annotate on your screen. Yeah. We got news tomorrow. We do 8 30 unemployment, baby. Unemployment? 30 my time. Was it unemployment? Let me double check. It was it's Your something Easter. important. Unemployment at 8 30 Eastern, yeah. And it's then 30 year bond auction at 101. AM or PM PM Eastern. It's mad random. I do like that order block in this. That'll be hot. Oh. Decisions, decisions. Well, yeah, they just been doing like internal to external liquidity. A lot like lately, it's been I don't know, it's been a little annoying. The trade. <laughs> it's because they know everybody and their grandmother is in indices now. That's why forex so low volatility. They don't give the institutions don't care to liquidate the news over there. They want to liquidate the future oh. traders. Yeah, dude. Monday was like the only good move. Basically, <laughs> no we way, saw. Way. And then uh, yeah, the last couple of days just been 
kind of trash, bro. Dude, it's all right. You could still, it. like, if you're just scalping it, you could still hit, like, decent RRs. Mm -hmm. But it's just kind of like, dude, just drive you crazy price action. You know the meme where it's like, it's a dude poking something with a stick and he's like, do something. Do something. <laughs> Literally, bro. <laughs> These NGCs. Do something. Let's see what NQ. I need my money. Let's do something. Ooh. Yeah, NQ literally exactly the same, bro. Nah, NQ look cleaner for that uh, retracement into before con uh, continuing buys tomorrow. I'm going to set that a was nice weird, limit man. tonight. You caught the buys in, at New York Open just off the small time frame. Crazy. You, this is such a nice trade, though. Honestly, like mm -hmm. that's all you needed. It might look like just ugly, like choppiness, but like, bro, if you just snipe that from the bottom, you could catch it. Like, dude, Kevin caught like a ten R, easily, dude, easily three R, four R trade. Like, you know, your open move. It's not saying like you don't even have to like hold these for that long. It was in and out, and then just get out. It was just just like little pink into this whole candle, last push down, swept that liquidity, and then just never came back until it came to the liquidity. So by the time you got we got to this point, they took out all these eco highs and Asian highs. You know, you should have just been partially out and uh taking profits. And then it just came beautifully into this this hourly candle right here. I think it looks cleaner on like a 15 minute. Yeah, it's 15 minute order block and balance right underneath it. You know, uh, rest in liquidity right under these POIs. And you could even snipe that cell right there and call it a nice little trade too. But uh, yeah, from here, dude, I think maybe we see something like this. See maybe ounce from here. And I think uh, maybe we we sweep these highs and then see them come down. And then maybe reaccumulate right in here in that imbalance and pop. Or we continue lower, take out this. Good. Sir. Cause like, yeah, man. Yeah, but uh, really could. I'm curious to see something. US thirty though was um US thirty actually kind of like look better. Well, it's just five. Fun. Yeah. Nas throwing makes mixed signals, I think, for cells, but thirty looks oh, still US good. thirty looks the the clean, one of the cleanest ones. Like we had this clean liquidity sweep right here, this order block. So if we could come back down, we could see a clean opportunity for cells to sell it down. If not, maybe if we do come back down, you know, buy in this area. Wait for your lower time frame confirmations and then pretty pretty nice. Or set a limit like me. Whichever you want. Set a limit. Yeah. yeah, that's actually mad clean. We're not coming into anything on the left. Yeah, we did react from that. Yeah, but it's just that a reaction. Look at that four hour OB nigga with that imbalance with that sweep. And we got that top side liquidity to target next. Oh, mm. it was, this is too fucking easy. More liquidity later. Come on now. Come on now. I like these buys. I might break my rule and actually trade US 30 instead of just SPX. Another thing too is like if if uh indices because cryptos follow indices too a lot. So historically every time you know stocks and indices are, are bullish and they're going crazy, uh Bitcoin is just doing the same thing as well during the bull run. Mm -hmm. So I I think I don't know if there's ever been a, a bull run where indices 
and stocks are bearish. So that's one other thing too. We we saw um we saw these massive sell offs, you know, when uh crypto was dumping too. So you know, now that this is starting to go back up, maybe uh Ooh. maybe that can bring crypto up too. Bitcoin buys looming? Question mark. Yeah. I think so, bro. I I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But man, yeah, that's that's kind of all I got for for tonight, though. I'll pass, pass the sticks over to you, bro. Say that. Say that. Mom, get the cameras. My time to shine. Here we go, guys. From the get top. it. Get it. So honestly, bro, I ain't gonna lie. Hold on, let me get rid of this white boy. So tomorrow with eight thirty news, I am curious to see how London sets us up for tonight. Um, let's start off with indices. Honestly, I'm just going to just be confirming um a lot of things that you were saying. Oh, hi, V. Can I help you? My cat just touched me. Um, high key. We just need to continue to expansion. Bullish side swept. Where's my cursor? We did sweep this liquidity, came into something here, you know, because I was an engulfing candle to the downside. So next target would be this buy side liquidity tapping into this imbalance, right? Just based off the daily. So really catching, you know, that retracement into here on the four hour OB. Um, yeah, literally right there. That would be probably the best thing. So best case scenario is London takes us into here already. We just accumulate from like five to eight a.m. and then news pops us higher. Um, or, you know, cause I've seen this play out before. If this, let's just say is the order block, there's the engulfing candle price is coming back. What we can see is a 30 expansion starts to trickle down nine 30 mitigations for New York open. And then one more push to the upside. So literally giving us two entries um to play into right with same sl being just below the low so yeah very curious to see how london sets it up for tomorrow's news um as i think it'll be a very good catalyst to kind of examine you know where to execute a little more accurately now nas on the other hand nas is kind of weird okay because like we're incentivizing a whole lot of sellers in this supply area not only that, we literally show very clear, you know, where's the cursor? Like low, high, internal low, higher, high, sweep or break a structure to the low side, price comes up, mitigates, right? Lower high. So we can continue lower. I don't think we will, right? Target that sell side liquidity. Um, If we do, I think it's just going to be accumulations below, right? So it is kind of interesting to see maybe you know because as y'all know what for indices one leads one follows and then one lags behind like nine out of ten sps is going to be the last one so if nas goes lower we could maybe see um us 30 spx sort of trickle a little lower as well you know if it's the catalyst for sales um i don't think it will personally but i'm not ignoring you know this very clear pattern of potential distribution Within a very strong, you know, higher time frame area. I mean, if anything, we could just go like somewhere down here. You know. Quick. Quick like sell to buy. So and then SPX. That makes sense too. You know, I'm gonna look at the numbers. I wanna want I wanna do a class with that. Um uh, the daily, where are we? We didn't do much. We just came swept previous day liquidity. So that's actually a good sign. Okay, we swept liquidity to the downside. Ooh. Cool. The four hour, we're building all that top side liquidity. The one hour. That's interesting. So we have all of this. Boom. That's our lick. We're going to come for that at some point. But look at this stair-stepping mitigation, you know? Low, high, higher, low, higher, high, retracement, higher, low. So that's curious. 30-minute, yeah, that imbalance. Honestly, I might just set that limit for tonight. I really do like that area. 
grab this right here. Oh. I really do like that. It's kind of sweet. Okay. And then you can either put stop loss below the imbalance low or play it a little more safe below the range low. Huh. I do like that. You know? Might just play that. Might just play that. Um. So, yeah, but honestly, overall, indices, I do want it to go higher. In terms of news for tomorrow, so traditionally, and it actually will tell you here, um, the number of individuals who filed for unemployment insurance for the first time during the past week, actual less than forecast is good for currency, right? So as long as the actual number is below the 21,000 unemployed claims reported, then we're looking good, right? Indices can go higher. Previous month, we were at 208, right? So there's our, our, our kind of our bar, right? Where to really measure things, our reference point. So with 211 being the forecasted or predicted, that means that there are more employments than previously reported. Um, I don't know if it was like last week during NFP or last month. So that could be a bad sign, right? So maybe tomorrow's news will be just that catalyst that we were talking about with NAS being the excuse to sweep a little lower liquidity before pushing price back to the overall upside. Because, I mean, if you zoom out, we are literally... Extremely bullish, you know, on indices. So I am going to be keeping my eye out um, on this, like on this little report, because that's always a good hint as well. Um, For GU, honestly, I just been try writing this trend. Um, Let me go to a different, I don't want to delete this one. So for GU, we're literally just tr uh, trading within this overall range. Um. Cool. So literally look at it like this. If this is our relative high, or our range high, and this is our range low, then we know that the target, if breaking out of this range and we're continuing the sell side momentum, should be this old relative low down here, right? So my thought process is where can I position myself to just catch the you know stair step down the way? Because obviously the best points to get in are you know, you sell at the top, not the bottom. Um so really, after we mitigated a 786, um, the next step was low, high, you know, damn near break of structure. Uh, we did get this mitigation yesterday. That was pretty sick. Um, but right, so low break of structure. Here was the last push up before lower low. So although we're playing this overall selling range right from high to this low, in order to get down here, we need to understand this stair stepping movement here right cool cool make sure i do this cool 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 so looking where we are in this range pull out so low high internal liquidity low last mitigation high here break a structure lower low generate a more sell side liquidity to take easy enough cool we will go ahead and just fib out this relative range that we're in. Bang. And I'll delete this one. Get out of the way. Cool, 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 cool. And so we see that first and foremost, the this was the four-hour imbalance. Taking up anywhere from the 618 all the way to, you know, full extension of the range, right? Mm, top. So there's our first thing where pricing starts to come into anywhere. I personally believe within the 618 fib range, right? So now the second thing is, well, where was price last naturally moving before being manipulated? And you see, let me pull up this block, right? So we have a high, a low, a price push higher, lower, right? And then this is that shift to the upside. So we can look to enter Anywhere on this up pushing momentum, right? Since that was the last natural push before the major manipulation back, back to the downside, we do have not only a clear imbalance here on the one hour, but we have a institutional candle within that imbalance. So it actually aligns pretty clear cut. Oops, wrong way, wrong way, wrong way. Uh, right, pretty much lines clear cut with the 786. 
So a lot of um conviction as the seam price come within the seven eight uh six one eight or the seven eight six fib retracement level. Um, so literally we can just catch that and then you know look to play two scenarios, right? We can go ahead and catch this retracement to its natural, you know, either that liquidity generated, the fib extension, um, or even you know, a little lower into the last fib extension, or we can really look to play this right being since we're in this high to low range, right? We can really just start to continue playing this downtrending momentum right out of here. So you have to have a lot more patience um, for that. So don't be afraid to just like literally trail your entries along the way. Cause that's something I've been doing um, personally, you know, like literally still holding this one, but like that's a five to one R and R when this one over here, you know, just understanding the um, understanding the the downtrend was a six to one, right? This one I did get clacks. I didn't think we're we're gonna retrace. It might have been just you know a, a quick push down. Um, I was in for four to one, right? Did get clapped, whatever. Going to just showing this because and then this one here's a five to one. So it's going to show like yes, you can if you understand the entire narrative, you can swing trade it. But like the R and R, it sometimes doesn't make the most sense. Like you can get the same R and R. A whole lot quicker and a whole lot more setups um, to give you that R&R, &R, right? So that's kind of my bias looking into dollar um, and EU or GU. Um, like we literally came last week into a pretty good retracement level 618. We're starting to expand to the upside, you know. No real reason for dollar to halt its expansion anytime soon. Like we may see some kind of so here's an imbalance you we might be able to see price come into here and use this mitigation of the imbalance as an excuse to retrace but like it, it wouldn't be anything major right it would be a natural retracement to literally just keep building its buy side liquidity and then when the trend continues we just overtake it you know so that's kind of my thought process going into tomorrow, especially, you know, really looking to capitalize on news, not just USD news, but also GU news, right? A whole lot of GBP news at 7 a.m. Eastern. So if I want GU to literally rise, oh, shit. if I want GU to literally rise so I can get my higher entry um, pending orders like executed, then I literally want GU to come higher, which it kind of looks like it might be doing now, right? We got the one hour right there. Um, maybe not. Could be. Mm, could actually could have, right? Imbalance breaks higher, come back, mitigates, breaks higher, come back, starts to mitigate key level. I don't know. It's an Asian recession. I might just be making shit up. But those are really my thoughts. Um, going into it, and then Bitcoin. What's a good price? Right now. Okay, I like how you did like this over here with like internal liquidity for this up here. So like if we break above this distro that I saw in the one hour, four hour, and I definitely think we will target that. But like I just been seeing this trend play out until probably here. You know, around sixty K range. I wouldn't mind that buy. But if not, then like not. Nah. Me gusta. All right. If not, then at least 53 to 50. Yeah, that 50K mark, like you was talking about. Oh, well, when was, that was happening April 15th. So April, May, June, July. So anywhere from July 15th to August, September, or October 15th, we're going to get the next leg up. I got all my money in crypto, bro. Yo, what am I going to do? Um, ramen for three more months. I'm not eating, bro. Yeah, gonna... that boy eating that that new keto gluten free fucking paleo. Gluten free, yeah. Uh, that boy eating nothing but ice and water. Ice you and know, water. You know you gotta do. You gotta go to the supermarket and just like you know how they have the fruits right there that you put in bags. Fuck that. Just start eating them. <laughs> and you good? Or like go to Whole Foods. You know how they like the hot food like there. You just start scooping mm. cardboard. Yeah, you just gotta go there. Crazy. Yeah, feel me. <laughs> that shit will be hard. I used to yeah, bro. It's not gonna eat till we hit all time highs, bro. Until we hit a hundred k. 
And Minimum. So, <laughs> then we can go out back to 12K, bro. That'd be crazy. Like, your boy gonna be like, bones. Uh, I'm gonna buy some Bitcoins. Not like some Bitcoin. Not around, but... Bitcoin. Uh, I mean, the lowest I see is going is probably maybe 30 if that. Like, everything else is mitigated except down here, but. That would be wild, man. I don't think that would happen, but. Because, like, structure point, low, high, lower, low, high. Internal, last poke up to the upside. So there's our structure point. We finally broke that. So here's that low that put us in. So, like, this is our range. If we break below here at 15, then that's fucking scary because that's literally this, this. That's may be the last bull run for a little bit. <laughs> no way. Yo, imagine like it's like nah. I keep buying Bitcoin. It's it's good, and it's like that shit literally taking to ten k, one k, five hundred. I in love order. Imagine, bro. Like Bitcoin hits. Imagine, like niggas are screaming. I told you, shit was fake. Is that that happens, bro? I'm gonna need like a hug. Yeah, I don't swear. Oh, like man. my shit. This shit's all. It's been a lie this whole time. The Simpsons lied. No, I keep the Simpsons used to be my investment strategy because they're like Bitcoin Infinity, Infinity Ethereum 10K, XRP $36, and like Cardano at $300. Sounds like perfect. They know the future. I'm just going to buy all this right now. When I was for a little bit, but XRP ain't doing shit. So I stopped. I stopped. Woe is me. Where's the crypto? Oh, it's right here. What's Radeon doing? Nada. Oh, well. But yeah, that's all I got, honestly. Bitcoin to the moon. A little later on in the year, honestly. Not not now. Not now. I'm not convinced. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, you know, a pretty short call, I guess. Our calls are like an hour and a half. Basically not, but well, not nah, it, it was when crypto was running and it's like everything else, like yo, we could play this narrative, this narrative. But when everything cools out, I was like, just gotta sit in your hands and wait. That's it. Is oh. there anything that um how is everyone in this call like doing like you, how are you guys swear you know, trading wise? Let me know. Uh, Y'all got any questions? Crypto wise, you know, like Might don't be uh it. shy, you know, you guys can talk to us too, man. Because we're here to help you guys as well, you know, and, and help each other out. It's all kind of like just a giant accountability group at the end of the day almost. So, like, you know, if anything, uh, you know, if you guys, you know, are doing well, I mean, that would be nice to know too. Or if you guys are struggling with anything, um, you know, just kind of knowing where you're at in, in your journey, um, you know. Let a nigga know. Don't be shy. I think that that's, that's the fastest way I learned was just asking questions and um. You know, just creating conversation and stuff. And then, you know, you going back with the information. I just and, bought more uh, What is that? I just bought more crypto. What did you buy? Bitcoin. Bitcoin? Yeah. You're a Bitcoin maxi, bro. Low key. I'm just a, I'm just a junkie, you know? Like, I'm a fanboy. First it was Solana. Now it's Bitcoin. Tomorrow will probably be, like, Pepe. You know, the female version of Pepe. Because hey. females' rights matter or whatever. I love crypto but all right fam wait we got some comments um uh, yeah i know it's the waiting game sheesh oh never mind i should read the comments i'm good if you good kev it's good. the waiting game now 100 swear the accumulation game has begun and that's where people are supposed to buy but they rather wait until the next leg up you know which i get personally because i that used to be me like, man, when it moves, I'll buy. But, like, you're supposed to buy at the bottom, not the top. This is the bottom. Carlos. 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 The we stream tomorrow morning, bro? Huh? We stream tomorrow morning? Um, You can. I will be at the office. You be at the office? I'll be at the office. I might, I might stream tomorrow. Say that. I'll pull up on my phone. Feel me? Support for the boys. 
Cause like I still trade at my desk. Don't get it twisted, but like I can't do a whole Discord server. No, you, know? you can't be streaming at work. Nah, imagine, imagine, bro. I'm over here dealing with fucking what, am, like personal injury, fucking like cases. You know, I'm in a meeting with a judge and niggas is like, yo, sell S and P. He's gonna be like, huh? I'm like, sorry, not you. All right, guys, look so I'm looking at. Uh, uh, we just got to break a structure, retest <laughs> this order block. No go way. Make. 18 contracts. Um, yeah, full margin. Let's go. Let's get it. My, my attorney's going to be like, oh, all right, let's hit it. Like, yeah. I'm a fan of Cosmos. Very underrated project. Or very underrated. I heard it. I've heard of it. I think I, I'm starting crack. That's uh, good. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Is that in the crack, bro? I'm starting the crack. Um, I want to live on the street, yes. I want to, I want to scratch my arms and until oh, my na- my fingernails fall off. Cheers. I'm starting crack, bro. Yeah, that's wild. I mean, hey. Oh, you got. That's wild, man. I don't recommend that, but. I mean, you gotta stay up somehow if you trade London and New York. You know. It is crack, bro. Starting crack. Crack. I'm starting crack. But not a t-shirt. No royalties. Yeah, I gotta show you some stuff actually. Ooh, please. Oh, oh you um, have a connect for a flyer. I need a I've been meaning to text you. Yeah, we could do some we could we could yeah, do that. Yeah, show, we need show. a flyer. We need a flyer. All right, all right. We can talk about that some yeah, out, outside yeah. of the yeah, session. Yeah, 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 yeah. You feel you a little bit? We don't we wanna be those guys talking the session, no? Crazy. Fire Hondo. Cool, cool, cool. So, all right, fam. We're gonna go ahead. And, Kev, if you good, I'm good, bro. What's up? I said I'm. We're gonna go ahead and end it. I, you good? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good for tonight. There's not too much going on. You know, I don't want to keep you guys on here. Mm-hmm. You know, too long. Staring at our pretty faces. I mean, y'all can if you want. I already get stared at in real life. It's not pretty nigga problems. Anyways, familiar as always. <laughs> as always, it is. Midnight 08 over here on the East Coast, Beast Coast. So we're going to go ahead and look to log off for tonight. We appreciate every single one of y'all for saying tuned in, tapped in. You know what? I'm going to call some names out because, like, it's a, it's a family today. Yo, Carlos, con cuidado, con crack, bro. But we appreciate you. Kevin, we appreciate you, bro, being tuned in, tapped in consistently. I see you, Carlos. You tuned Samira, yo, what's up, boo? We appreciate you for saying tuned in, tapped in, as always. So f- I'm from Colombia. I don't understand English well, but something r- remains with me. They are very crack. Ah, Amen. bro. Okay. Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Entendí, entendí, bro. Porque en español uh-huh. dicen crack como tú eres un crack. Like you, that means like you're like you're fire, basically. Uh, no, hablan español. Yeah. Podemos hablar español, bro. Uy. Y nos volamos, bro. Increíble. No, yo hablo español. También hablo español, bro. No, está bien. Por el blanco. No. Uno, bro. De una, de una. Nah, that boy can carry. Saludos, bro. No problem, Samira. Yo. Samira. I don't want to say it, bro. Samira. Much love. Much love, much love. Ah, familiar. As always... Do me a favor and stay patient, stay disciplined, and the motherfucking 100x gains will come. Hasta mañana, familia. Stay tuned, stay active. Peace.